Hey, what's going on, Class Scholars? I hope your day is going well. My name is Kieran Tross, and I'm here today continuing the Azure Key Vault series. Um, so uh, this is part four, where we're going to talk about firewalls with Azure Key Vaults. Um, if you haven't seen any of the other videos, if you're just jumping in at this point, um, I'd recommend that you watch some of the other videos. I cover uh, a lot of other topics uh, in topic one. We did introduction to Azure Key Vaults uh, in part in the second video. Uh, we did uh, policies and key rotations. Uh, third video was about um, Azure backups and replication. And then we have this video, which is firewalls uh, with your Azure Key Vaults. So um, this is going to be a short video. I'm just going to go in and jump right into it. So here we have our, our Key Vault. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here to networking and the way we have set up um, at the moment is uh, allow public access from all networks. Now in production, you really don't want to do that. Uh, so there are a couple different options that you can use to filter out who has access to your network or who you will allow access to your key vault service, I should say. So we could come to this first one right here, which is allow public access from specific virtual networks. Now you can come down here and you can say add a virtual network or you can add existing virtual network or you add a new one. So for us, we're going to go add existing virtual network. And then it brings us, sorry about that, over to this screen where we have our subscription and you cho choose your virtual network. So I can say, okay, I'm going to go to this one, which is my virtual network. And then I could go to the subnets within that one. So I can choose East US uh, DC or I could just do default. Now it's giving me this message about, hey, um, you don't have uh, service endpoints enabled. Um, I'm not really concerned about that right now. Uh, service endpoints are, are good, but um, I'm probably going to get an error message with this. So I'm just going to say, do not configure this at the moment. And I can just click add and it will still allow me to do what I need to do. Now, another thing that you can do is just firewall add IP ranges to allow access from the internet or your on-premise network. So what you would do there is you can say, okay, add client IP address and you'd put, put in your public IP address for whatever your firewall that's on your network. So this way that you could communicate there as well. So you can do it that way. And then what I would do is come here and I click apply, right? So that would work as well. Now, the last thing that you can do, well, well, second to last thing I should say, because you could have this disable public access and then nobody has access to it. But you can also come here to private endpoint connections. So private endpoints are is going to make sure that your data, that there's no network traffic um, over the Internet. So you're going to be literally utilizing Microsoft's backbone. Right. So this is one of the most secure things that you can do. And what you would do is you come down here to create. And you can just, you know, come here, you can put in the resource group and then you can call it whatever you want to call it. So you can say uh, key vault um, private uh, endpoint, and this will get access into your, your network. Um, and let's say we did East US, we could throw it there and then we come here to resource connect to an Azure resource in my directory. Um, and then it says connect to Azure resource by resource ID or alias. You can choose this one or what you want to. And then I can say, all right, I'm going to look for key vault resource type. Uh, let's see if I can find key vault. All right. And then it should say uh, private link resource, uh, cloud scholars key. So it's it already populated it for us. And then target tab, we just do fault. That's the only option we get. So let me come out a little bit virtual network. We have that information there. Network policy for private endpoints is disabled. You could come here and, and, and then you could do a couple of different things here if you want to, but we're not really concerned about that. So we could leave it the way it is. Uh, private IP configurations. You could do a dynamic allocate IP address or you could do a static IP address. We'll leave it as a dynamic for this. Um, next, we come over here to DNS, integrate with private DNS. You say yes, this is the easiest way of going about it. Um, and then you have your information showing up here. And then tags, you don't have any tags at the moment. Um, no need to do that for this. And then you just click on review and create. And then once you do that, you could go ahead and you can create your private endpoint. Now the private endpoints do cost. So I'm not going to go ahead and finalize on this one because I don't really need it. 
Um, this is just for the video, but that's pretty much how you would go about creating a private endpoint for your um, organization, for your firewall rules. As I mentioned before, this is going to be a short and sweet video. Um, we've talked a lot so far in this series. Uh, the next uh, video, we're going to talk about uh, using Logic Apps and integrating that with your Azure Key Vaults so that this way that you can kind of get some kind of automation going there with an app designer. So that's going to be a fun one. So um, as always, if uh, I hope this video was uh, beneficial to you. Uh, please, if you haven't done so already, please smash that like and subscribe button here at Cloud Scholars. Uh, you know the goal, <laughs> uh, to get you from scholar to consultant and from consultant to expert. Thank you and see you next time.